Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing really well out there. Huge episode today. We've got so much to get through. I hope you had a great Christmas period, a great New Year's period. This is the first video of 2021. Nice to finally have 2020 out of the way. We're gonna go through my December monthly sales figures in this episode today. I'm also gonna take you through a few of my sales results throughout the week. And uh, I wanna highlight a couple of resellers in the community doing some really good things as well. It's gonna be a regular on this episode, just highlighting a few resellers and showing you what they're selling as well. So like I said, there's a lot to get through. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Excited for the 2021 year ahead. Uh, we'll kick things off in this episode with a piece of furniture that I managed to sell for some pretty good profit. All right, so we'll kick the episode off with the first item being an entertainment unit that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace on Monday. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, yes, it's another entertainment unit. They are just doing incredibly well for me. There were a few tentative reasons as to why I potentially didn't buy this piece of furniture. The first one was that it had the CD rack and that just showed that it was a quite an old piece of furniture. So it was a bit tentative in that regard. It was also the color. Uh, I generally like to buy white or black and this was a sort of a dark brown, a mahogany sort of dark brown, which was okay but um, even the handles as well. It looked very old fashioned and I wasn't sure what buyer it was gonna suit. Uh, but there were three reasons as to why I bought it. And the first one was that it was only $60. It was solid hard wood and there was absolutely no damage to it. So at a good price, quality and solid wood with no damage, I had to do it. And sure enough, by bringing it home and listing it back onto Facebook Marketplace, this one has sold on the next day sale for $170. Now I took an offer, I had it up for $175. I said the best I can do is 170. I've taken a $110 profit on this one. It really does go to show that uh, if you're ticking those three boxes of quality, uh, cost and uh, damage, then you're gonna go a long way to making a few dollars on the resale, no matter how old a furniture item is. Sticking with the furniture theme, guys, I managed to pick up another entertainment unit as well. This one was bought on Tuesday, just a few days ago. Now I was feeling a little bit better because this was more in my ballpark of how I like to buy my furniture. It wasn't exactly a solid wood, which was kind of a, a negative on, on what I look for, but it was white and uh, it was a really nice low line uh, entertainment unit. So it was kind of set lower than what they normally are. Uh, it had two drawers, some really nice storage space. There was no damage to this one whatsoever. Again, the price was a huge plus and that's generally how I buy my furniture if it's at the correct price. Didn't have to negotiate, bought it for $50 and this one sold on the very same day back onto Facebook Marketplace. Uh, for $170 as well. Uh, very similar story to the first one. I had it up for $175. It sold for $170 and uh, I profited $120. So these entertainment units, they generally do sell between $150 to $200. And if you are buying those three categories, low price, good quality, no damage, you're gonna generally go a long way to making yourself some money. A bit of nostalgia for this next one. I picked up a Game Boy Color system off Facebook Marketplace. And initially the guy that was listing this actually didn't list the Game Boy itself. He listed four games for $30, but he also had, after I asked a few questions, a Pokemon Yellow game, which goes for about $50 on eBay, and a Game Boy Color, which is this one right here. Now, all I had to go off was he was selling four games for $30 and I needed to negotiate a price for everything as low as I could possibly get it. In the end, I had to accept $100 for the purchase of all of it, but I knew the resale value was about $225. Now I was happy to take that $125 profit. It's a little bit less of a profit margin to how I normally buy and sell, but I do know that these sort of games and consoles sell in pretty quick time. Now I listed this individually on eBay and Facebook Marketplace, and I did get a sale made for the Game Boy console for $75. Now, I'm gonna attribute $50 out of the $100 deal to the Game Boy itself, which in effect only makes me a $25 profit, but it's the money that I'll be able to make off the five games that are gonna turn this into a pretty good purchase. So I think I'm gonna be able to get about 150, and that will result in that 225 overall resell. So a pretty good result there in just seven days to get the Game Boy done for $75. I've almost got all of my money back, and I've still got five Game Boy games that should all sell for roughly $30 each. 
This next item was a DVD Blu-ray player uh, that I picked up off Facebook Marketplace in, again, another bulk buy. There were about five um, sort of living room items, um, entertainment unit, TV, the Blu-ray player. There was a Sony um, home audio system as well. There were quite a number of items in this, and I picked everything up for $90. Um, I'll attribute this DVD player to about a $10 worth of a spend, and I put it up on Facebook, uh, on eBay, actually. I put it up on eBay for $50 plus $18.50 in postage, and it did sell, which was really good news. It's sold in the space of 33 days. Um, when you take everything out of it, I've made $34.22 on a DVD Blu-ray player. So there is some good money to be made. They do sell for some okay money. $50 on eBay is roughly what they're going for, at least this one anyway. Um, and uh, when I bought it for just 10 bucks off Marketplace, that was that was a pretty good price to be buying. So do keep an eye out. Obviously, if you see them in the thrift stores or the op shops, um, go ahead and buy them at that sort of a price because you can make some pretty good money when you go to put it on eBay. This next item is an item that I will always look for when I'm in the op shops and I was stoked to find it in a trip to the thrift with my mates just last Thursday. It was a Kobe Bryant Lakers number eight jersey and given the circumstances with the unfortunate uh, passing of him last year, uh, they are actually at a premium and um, people are all after these Kobe jerseys um, to see it in the op shop for just five bucks, even with a few marks on it. I was able to go and sell it on Facebook Marketplace in the space of just four days for $35. So I've made a $30 profit here. Um, any sort of sporting team, any sort of player and number on the back of the jersey, um, jerseys are a really good thing to get your hands on. I do speak about them a lot on this channel, but for good reason, because you can always pick them up around the $5 mark and they generally always sell for between $25 to $50, depending on the quality and whether or not they're obviously a genuine item. Um, the fakes do still sell, but if you do get a genuine uh, jersey, they go on to sell for a little bit more. So I was happy to pick this one up. The Kobe jersey, number eight, sold for 35. Facebook Marketplace, zero fees. To prove the point around the jerseys, I managed to also sell this Real Madrid 2017 away jersey that I picked up in an op shop that I actually paid up on. I paid $10 for this one. It was certainly a whole lot more than what I would normally pay for jerseys. Like I touched on with the Kobe jersey, you generally pick these up for about five bucks. So I paid a little bit more, but it did sell on eBay for $35 on a best offer. I tried to sell this one for 45, I think it was. Um, and then I've ended up taking a $35 offer. So in the end, I've made $18.25 profit. It did sell in 78 days, and that's why I took the best offer when it presented itself. Um, maybe could have listed this one on Facebook Marketplace. I had a quick check and it was never listed on Marketplace. And I often find that they do sell a whole lot quicker when you just try to sort of flick them off locally. Um, so this one was still good though, $35, uh, paid five. So $18.25 profit. Buy the jerseys when you see them in the op shops because I've made a few dollars each and every week. Another sort of quality shoe that I always look for when I'm in the op shop, so these Vans, uh, traditional canvas shoes. Um, you can often get them in a, a whole range of different colors. Um, you'll obviously know them um, pretty well, I'm assuming. Um, these Vans do go on to sell pretty good on eBay. They're about a $100 shoe um, if you're buying them in the shops uh, at you know, when they are brand new. But um, I would, I've would i sold a few of them for $50. This one actually only sold for $37.20. Um, I took a best offer and um, I made $21.67. So not the greatest of profit for this one. I generally try to get 30 bucks for it, but I was trying to clean out old stock. These have been around for 40 days. I do, I have a lot of shoes and I really wanted to add this into the video to say that if you've got a stack of shoes lined up and you've bought so many over the last few months, years, whatever the case may be, and you get an offer that is slightly under what you think it's truly worth, I prefer to get the money back in my hands. If I can make $21 profit and go again on something else like a piece of furniture, um, I've got so many shoes, I'm happy to take unders every now and again. And that's exactly what was the case here. 3720, it's not the most you can get for these sort of shoes. You can make more. If you're into reselling at the very beginning, I would try and hold out for $50 to $60 for these if they're in good condition. But because I have so many, I just couldn't say no to just taking a $30 sale price. And um, to make it $21.67, um, I was still pretty happy. So they were a couple of my sales uh, throughout the week that I just thought I'd highlight with a few different stories uh, associated. But in, like I said, at the start of the episode, I did want to highlight a few resellers that are doing some great things. And the first one that I want to highlight today is uh, Cassie Melody. She's a part-time reseller from far north Queensland. She's a travel agent full-time and she does a bit of part-time reselling. She says she's just at the beginning early days, but she is still doing some very, very good things. 
and I am learning a lot off her. So I've asked off her comment from last week's episode to just send in her recent sale. And it was this frying pan that she managed to sell for $55 plus $8.95 postage, if you don't mind. And uh, this one was bought for just $8 in the op shop. Now it was Sunbeam. Sunbeam is obviously a very good brand to get your hands on. I do know that. But it was a vintage uh, frying pan that personally, I would really bypass myself. And, and that's why I love this community because there are people buying and making money on things that I would normally never do otherwise. Um, That's a huge profit there on that one. And um, she does have an Instagram page as well. So by all means, go and follow. I'll whack it up here for you. Have a look at Reselling Wonders is the Instagram page. So go and give her a bit of love and and give her a follow there. But um, that was an awesome one. Frying pans, $55 plus postage. Who would have thought? Um, Really good result, Cassie. Well done. And uh, keep working really hard. 2021 is going to be a good year for you. Next one up is uh, one of my really good mates, uh, Chris Furlong. I have spoken about this guy on my channel a little bit before, but he did have a ripping sale that he let me know about, and I felt that I had to let you guys know about it. Uh, It was a band that I have sold in the CD space before, but it was a CD for ACDC. Um, So it was the Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap CD that he picked up for $2 in an op shop. And if you don't mind, $80.995 postage. Just uh, That's an unbelievable result for a CD. Um, Not sure exactly what was um, so special about this one, but um, to get that result done was, was huge. Um, now, Chris has uh, got a YouTube channel himself. He talks about long distance running uh, quite a bit. Um, that's predominantly what his channel is about, but I think there's going to be some reselling content uh, coming to Chris's channel as well. So CF Furlong is where you can find him. Here's uh, a look at his page um, for you as well. But um, CDs, I speak about these a lot and I do try to look for them whenever I'm in the op shops. You can always get them for around $1 to $2. And as Chris has shown right here, they do go on to sell for $80 to $90 to over $100 as well, depending on the right ones. So well done, Chris. Um, Awesome, mate. Thank you for letting me know in the comments. Uh, They are my two highlighted resellers of the week. Um, If you'd like to be included and get a bit of a promotion, uh, let me know in the comments below what was your best sold sales item of the week. I will be picking out couple of my favorites uh, each and every week and putting them into these videos uh, just as I've done there. So uh, let me know what you've done. Hopefully you've had a few good sales this week that you can include uh, into the comments and uh, I'll be in touch to uh, include you into next week's episode. All right, so we're going to up to the point now where we're going to take through my December monthly sales figures as well. So we'll dive into the very first uh, screen that I'll pull up for you here, which is going to be my gross revenue for the month of December. Uh, So if we pull it up and have a bit of a look, I have made 132 sales in the month of December. My total revenue worked out to be $6,166.21. Now, that figure does include postage. Uh, My average sales price worked out to be $40.49. That figure doesn't include postage, uh, just so you're aware. Cost of goods, uh, $1,498.70. That figure is the of the $6,000 that ultimately uh, came about, the cost of those goods was $1,498, not the cost of every item that I bought during the month, just of what actually went on to sell. Uh, My profit margin this month was a little bit less than what it has been in previous months. Uh, It was just 68%. Uh, If we take a look at my total fees for the month of December, you've always got to pull them out to get your profit. And uh, my eBay fees were $483.81, which um, there was no sort of scaries in the month of of December. That is a true reflection of about 10% worth of fees. Um, PayPal fees was $130.15. Postage was $822.12. So $1,436 was sort of my fees and postage that I needed to pull out of the six grand. Um, So when we have a look at the paycheck scenario, which is so when you pull out cost of goods postage out of the revenue, you get a profit of $3,231.43. Tax worked out to be $386. So my take home pay was $2,845.43. So look, by no means was that my best month that I've ever done. Uh, I think my best month was about 3,300 worth of take home. So about $500 less than what I have done in the past. But I still think that it was still a pretty good month to average what I have always averaged as a full-time reseller from starting in September. It's now four months where I've averaged between five and a half to six grand worth of sales, um, not including postage. So 
Another steady month is sort of how I'd describe it. Um, I have set in a recent video on my YouTube channel some pretty outlandish goals uh, for next year where I wanna try and hit $100,000 in gross sales. So these figures are gonna to have to significantly go up. Um, I'm still happy with the figures, but to get to where I wanna be, I'm gonna to have to start buying, listing, and selling a whole lot more. So really great to sort of finish the year on what has been some pretty steady numbers, which is exciting. Um, but from now on, 1st of uh, January, I wanna really start to level things up for a big 2021 year. Um, if you have a look at the other side of the coin, We've got inventory as well. So like I said, the cost of goods was just the cost of goods that sold. I also went and bought a heap of inventory as well. So whether it sold or it didn't sell, I bought 249 items in the month of December. My gross purchase amount was $2,047.90. So my average, my average purchase price was actually $8.26, which is the lowest that it's ever been for the month of December. Um, I think it's been up as high as $9.50. Um, what does change that figure quite a bit is how much furniture I buy in any given month, obviously being a larger um, individual purchase price. But um, to get $8.26 as the average, I thought was, was pretty good. Um, when you have a look at the cash flow scenario, I've added this one into my monthly reviews because I think it's pr it's a pretty key figure that I like to always keep on top of. Um, what it what it means by cash flow is what are your gross sales excluding the postage charges which the buyer pays? That was four thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars. So I technically had that come in for revenue minus obviously the postage. My gross purchase was what we just spoke about, $2,047. So my cash flow for the month of December was $2,682.43. So that figure there, that cash flow figure, if you're trying to run a business where you're also trying to live off the money you're earning with the business and not just simply reinvest everything, I reinvested $2,047 but I've also obviously with the, the profits that I've made, I've been able to take home 2,682. So that's more of a reflection of what your individual paycheck is. Um, so to be 2,682, it's not where I want it to be, but I'm also not disappointed by it. Um, I'm, I'm still pretty happy, but like I said, I need to buy more, sell more, list more. Um, also too, I wanted to look at the sales platforms that are generating these numbers for me. Um, I am still putting a lot of focus into eBay and that's where the majority of the sales are coming from. Um, eBay, I've had 100 sales in the month of December and Facebook uh, Marketplace, I've had 32 as well. So 132 sales for the month, predominantly coming off eBay. So like I said, the, the month of December was a, a really interesting month. It was a very different month to any other month that I've had uh, full-time recently because there was a lot of um, distractions in, in the month of December. I had um, a lot of family come over for Christmas, so there were a few days off there. I had a lot of mates um, that were free and wanting to catch up and hang out, um, which took me away from you know working every day like I have in the past. So I really saw a real dip in everything, YouTube, um, obviously reselling itself, anything from a business front between December 15 and December 30, there was sort of a real two week lull there. Um, but that was because I was taking some time off. You've really got to have your finger on the pulse and keep working your way each and every day to get the results is, is what I've noticed. Um, so I, I need to get back on track basically starting tomorrow, Monday, the 4th of January. Um, I really need to kick things off with a really strong week to start um, 2021 and um, to achieve all the goals that I've set out to achieve at the beginning uh, of the year. So um, really looking forward, really motivated, excited to get stuck into what's going to be a great year, I just know. Um, but I was really, um, I guess, happy to I almost survive the month of December and not dip too heavily in sales results. Um, I, just, I just need to make sure that I pick it back up for the month of January moving forward. So... Hopefully you've got some enjoyment out of those numbers. If you wanted to query any of those numbers, any questions that you might have, obviously leave it in the comments. Um, but that was a real big snapshot, I guess, of, of how I've gone with the uh, with the month of December. And um, I'll bring you another one next month. I'll try and do it each every month. Um, let me know if, you, if you're enjoying that sort of a look. Um, but that'll do me, guys. That'll do me for today. We went through some sales. We obviously highlighted a couple of resellers doing some great things. And then my monthly sales numbers are still ticking along. Not too bad. Um, thanks very much for tuning in.
look forward to catching you in the next episode. Uh, we'll do a Tuesday video and um, I do look forward to catching you then. So thanks very much, guys. We'll see you in the next one. See you soon.